Southern Railfan is the place for amazing videos of all types of trains. Southern Railfan, subscribe today. Okay, in this video, we're going to cover the basic construction of our shelf layout uh, and bench work or lack thereof with this floating shelf layout. So let's get started with how we gathered our material. While doing my layout construction research as far as framing or bench work, uh, whatever you want to call it, just about every design uh, I've seen used one by four boards to build a base. Uh, but I didn't want to use any kind of bracket uh, like you see here. I wanted to, to, I didn't want a big L bracket sticking down underneath my layout uh, because I had a, a, a workbench that's going to be underneath the layout. So I needed to construct some type of frame that would be self supporting. Uh, so once I decided on my one by well, one inch by four inch boards, I just simply took a measurement. From that far corner to this far corner and that gave me obviously the length that I needed and I just tripled the length for a backboard a front board and in all the individual boards in the middle that I would be needing uh, to make the the braces across the inside and what I done was I mean I could have went to Lowe's or Home Depot or some of you guys, I don't know about out west, but up around the northern, there's like Menards, and I think they sell wood and stuff too. But what I done, uh, you can do this to save some money. These boards are not very expensive anyway, but I looked on uh, Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, and just punched in layouts, and there were several layouts in there that people were like, uh, you know, you take it down, you can have it. That's what I done. These were these, this were these boards came from was a layout that I took down. So that saved a little bit. Now, what I want to go over now is the planning of the construction of this so where the shelf would support itself with uh, no brackets. So we'll go over that now and I'll show you how I came up with that. Okay, my biggest concern with the freestanding construction of the shelf layout is I didn't want it to sag. I didn't want it to uh, droop down under the weight of what I've got on it. Now I could have built it, uh, you know, like a torsion box style, uh, but I didn't want to have to route out the bottom and route out the top. So I had to come up with a uh, mathematical algorithm, if you want to, or, or process of, of figuring out how much weight would it take at the end of this to pull away from the board that it's attached to and away from the wall. Uh, so what I used is I built a T-section just like this, uh, 12 inches, and then this single board came out by itself. And I took the weight of what I thought would be on the shelf. Uh, you know, locomotives, rolling stock, scenery, and guesstimated, uh, scientifically <laughs> how far that would be out and actually it came out to about 24 inches before it would start uh, pulling apart there and I didn't need 24 inches I only wanted uh, about 16 17 18 inches so uh, that worked out well there for the uh, construction of that but the key to it is the uh, the screws that you use and how you attach it to the wall. Now, normal frame construction in a house, you have two by four studs every 16 inches on center. So what that means is right here in this corner of the wall, you're gonna have half of a stud behind this, and then you come out 16 inches, and this set of screws is right on that stud. So I'm going from my layout frame directly through into a stud. This style shelf will not work 
mounting it any other way. If you use the anchor screws in the drywall, won't work. It's going to pull it out. You've got to go direct the wood to get this to work. And you've got to use the right screw. If you try to use a regular wood screw that's got a, uh, you know, a, a smooth shoulder on the top of it that just goes into the wood, that's not going to work either. Because what's going to happen is your board here on the end is only going to be held by that shoulder there and this there's no uh, ridge in the screw to hold itself in that wood. Now what you need to do is get a screw that has the threads all the way up to the shoulder there. And what works perfect, sorry about my dirty fingernails, I'm working on a motorcycle carburetor today, uh, is drywall screws. Uh, drywall screws have a very aggressive uh, thread and it's always all the way up to the uh, shoulder there. So what you need to do is drill your pilot hole and your pilot hole needs to be smaller than the thread. Your, your uh, drill bit that you use for the pilot hole can only be about the size of that solid shaft in the middle of that screw. And then uh, you just screw that through there, get somebody to help hold it up. You want to make sure that you know where all your electrical lines are. Yeah, you can use a stud finder or uh, most electrical uh, outlets are, I don't know, 36 inches or so. there's a, an inch requirement for them to be up off the floor. Uh, look at your code and, and see, but you need to, to do everything you can possible to identify where you've got electrical lines and stuff running through because you don't want to send one of these screws through your frame into, uh, you know, your two before when they've ran a uh, house wiring or something through there because uh, obviously that's not good. It won't, may not hurt you at the time you do it, but it can cause a house fire later on. But once you get those mounted up there that way and count off your studs and as far as your layout goes do that every 16 inches into your stud and that i mean that's there it's not going to go anywhere that's going to hold anything that you might want to uh put on i mean obviously you can't sit on it or anything like that but as far as anything model trains goes that's that's really going to be all you need and if you get back from it I mean it, it's you know it's just looks like it's floating and that's exactly what I wanted I didn't want anything underneath it because down here I want to have work benches for my regular job uh, and I want to hang some LED lights underneath this layout and this front fascia will be covered uh, so you won't, we won't be able to see that that'll be that'll be cleaned up and then you've got a good four inches in here to hide any wiring, uh, electrical lines. When I designed this room, I designed uh, to have this outlet here right underneath my layout so I can plug my whatever uh, electrical uh, things that I, I need to have in there. So the next thing that uh, I had to decide which is absolutely personal preference is how high you want this shelf off the floor and that to me I wanted it about chest high because I want to use my layout as stress relief and I'd rather just be standing up walking back and forth on the layout uh, and if I later on wanted to, to you know have a stage in the yard or something down underneath it it would be okay for that. So mine is about 50 inches or so uh, up on, on there. And what I used on there, up on the wall, and what I used was just, uh, I had the stuff, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's just some cheap paneling, like uh, closet liner paneling or something uh, that I used. And you can see how, how thick it is. You can use foam 
as your base. I didn't want to on this because my, well, for a couple of different reasons. I'm gonna paint my track after I get it installed. So I wanted to be able to just take the wood back off of the layout to take it outside to, to paint it. And then this layout is gonna be, you know, a, a short line, small short line. So there's not gonna be any, you know, beautiful raised uh, ballast road bed and all, everything's going to be on the same level uh, you know it's going to have some rough looking track and because that's the way I want it now when this line runs out that wall out into the bigger part of the building when we build the big layout then uh, that's going to have a class one line on it so okie dokie I hope uh, if you have any questions please put them down below uh, I'll help you all I can but that's my basic how I built my shelf layout uh, and the next video coming up will be track planning so that's going to be very exciting as always guys thank you so much for watching